This is truck racing, a European sport that keeps its spectators on the edge of their seats. For safety, there's a speed limit of 100 miles per hour, so the skill is an overtaking on the corners. The trucks aren't built specially for racing. They're all adapted from road-going vehicles and engineered for acceleration rather than ultra-high speed. Steve Parrish has been number one in the World Championships five times in the last seven years, and he's used to the rough and tumble of the racetrack. It isn't as bad as you first think. We have special race roll bars and very stiff chassis, and it actually handles reasonably well. There's still an enormous amount of weight there, and it doesn't do exactly as you ask it, but it's much more precise than you would imagine a truck could possibly be. His truck is a top-of-the-line Mercedes that has been customized for racing. It's basically a 12-litre V6 engine, which in a road truck produces, I think, about 450 horsepower. The technicians and engineers work miracles with it and get it up to something like 1,250 horsepower. And I can tell you that is very, very impressive, not only to, to watch, but to drive. It goes from 0 to 100 in 9.6 seconds. Keeping all that power in check means that there's a tremendous buildup of heat in the disc brakes. So water is sprayed directly onto the discs to stop them from overheating. We use something in the region of uh, 85 litres of water during a 30 minute race, so it actually sprays a lot of water in. If the water runs out, the brakes wouldn't last more than one lap. After half an hour's racing, there was only 20 seconds between the finishing time of the first and the last truck. In this qualifying race, Steve has come in fifth, which places him fifth in line for today's final. After each race, the truck is weighed. There's a minimum weight limit of five tons to prevent the trucks from being rebuilt with lighter, more expensive metals. Information from each run is downloaded onto a computer. From this, the team can analyze the engine temperature and pressure, the G-forces, the suspension, and of course, Steve's performance around the corners. The teams are given one hour to prepare the trucks for the final. Driving such a huge piece of machinery around a racetrack requires particular skill, especially when there is so little space to overtake. Steve credits his racing success to his smooth driving technique. I call it tiptoeing my way round because if you grab hold of it and start heaving it around, you go nowhere because there is so much inertia. The tyres get overheated, the brakes get overheated. You really have to be very careful with it. Even changing gear is a specialized technique. I have a choice. I can either use the paddles, which the green one is the up arrow for upshifting, and the red one's for downshifting, so that's very simple. Or if I, uh, I want to, I can use the stick shifter, but it's much easier. There's no gate or anything like that. It's just forward for faster and back for lower gear.
they don't look like they should be going as fast as they are and it's a five ton vehicle that's doing 100 miles an hour sideways through a corner with smoke off the tyres. It's very, very spectacular. Unusually for Steve Parrish, this race has been a disaster. He suffered some serious damage to the truck and fallen back to sixth place. I'm a, an awfully bad loser. I just don't accept it, I really don't. But I hate to blame myself because once the race driver starts to blame himself, he's nearly finished, he's lost his confidence and that's very, very important to be a racing driver. Steve has been racing trucks since the sport began in the early 80s. At that time, the trucks were either driven by truck drivers with no racing experience, or like Steve, racing drivers with no truck driving experience. It was all a great recipe for entertainment. And over the years, there have been some spectacular incidents.